All right, guys, I got another troll, Justin. <laughs> they call you the 50-year-old on the channel. Actually, 51. 51. <laughs> Moving to 52. Well, I've seen you beat up on some pretty darn good young whippersnappers, so I'm excited you're here. I just Thanks. turned 48, and um, I watched you play, and uh, we both agreed that maybe we could get a little more spin and action on the forehand. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I feel like I've lost a little shape on my forehand over the past few years. I kind of rotate it over on the backhand to make it a little more extreme. So I feel like I am going at my forehand a little too straight, catching it a little too far back in the stance. So I'd like to move it forward a foot and get a little bit more arc. Yeah, and what I like about your forehand when it's on though, the, the flat ball is a good ball. You have a, I want everybody to understand, this guy's got a great forehand. We'll show you some clips of him hitting the forehand, but uh, it, it does seem to be, you know, it's going through the court flat and sometimes when it's a little off, it, it flies on you. So we're gonna give you a little more safety on your forehand today. That'd be great. All right, let's get to it. Sounds good. All right, there we go. Okay, Justin, uh, so the first drill we're going to do, just so you can build up your confidence on your sh shot and everybody can kind of see what you're doing on your forehand, I'm just going to feed you the ball and I don't want you to really work on shape right now. I want you to hit your normal cross-court ball that you'd hit uh, so we can kind of see where it is and where we can take it, okay? So I'm just going to feed you some nice balls. Occasionally I'll put maybe a little more spin on it because you also said when the ball kicks at you, uh, that's maybe a really tough ball for you and typically for people who do hit a flatter ball, that, that can get them in, in some trouble. So I'm going to put some of those in there too, all right? So let's have some fun. All right. Are you ready? Sure, Here we go. So hit him cross court, get more of the middle so we get a little footwork going. You got to get right back to there after every shot and just pretend you're in a point. Oh, it's a nice forehand. Yeah, he's got a big shot, guys. Good. A little tougher ball there for you. Good. Well handled. Oh, he's rocking. What about that? Good. A little out. Good. Good, again. I uh, got you there. Good. Good job. Okay, pulled off that one. Try that again. Short ball right there. Good. Again. Good, couple more. Good, last one. Ah, okay, no big deal. Okay, so first of all, uh, and we were kind of talking about this off camera, I don't know how much people can tell, but, but he's got a big forehand, okay? That is coming in. It's one of your big boy forehands at the club. Uh, whether it looks new school or old school, it doesn't matter. The ball is moving. It's got a lot of weight and pace going through the court. So this is what we obviously want to keep, okay? Um, every now and then, although for the most part on camera, and coming out here hitting balls, he's making most of these shots. Not like he's, he's you know, too inconsistent. Uh, but a couple of the balls higher got away from him, and a couple of the shorter balls he also missed. And, uh, and then also, uh, the balls were coming through the court, so before we work on more offensive shots, I wanna see if we can get a heavier ball. And so right now, what you do with your shot is, is you're coming here and you're pretty much coming like a hammer and a nail at everything, okay? So just to have some fun, okay, I like to call this the lab and, and it might get worse before it gets better, especially since he's already got a great forehand. So this might mess you up. And remember, when I'm teaching anybody anything, they can choose to use it or not and they can even make adaptations to it, okay? So I'm not, I don't like to change people's stuff, especially people have a great forehand like him. So I'm not changing your forehand, we're adding something to it. And so I'm gonna have you do something that Rick Macy actually did with me. What I want you to do is when you see that ball, uh, if the fist is my tennis, is the tennis ball right here, I want you to get about this much lower than the ball. Can you see that? So I want you to really make conscious effort to go in your loop. You start up here 
and then you pretty much have a small loop where you come here and then you pretty much go right through it hammer I want you to drop it more and then I want you to be super relaxed and come up and then I actually want you to like almost let go of the racket and have it basically touch the ground. Rick Macy gave me a lesson and he had me basically finish everything below my knees. Not because he wants me to always finish below my knees, but so we can really get that idea of relaxation and spin. You what I want you to do, go back there and I'm going to show you something else to make the racket go faster and get more spin. Faster? Still? Faster. No, no. We're just getting warmed up. I'm in the third quarter. Let's go. We're... So here's what I want you to do. Turn the front shoulder, tap the dog at 6.30, right there, you go back a little bit more. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I need to explain about the follow through. The follow through is a corrective technique. Don't let anybody use it for anything else. It might help you get your arm away. It might make your stroke look prettier. I get all that stuff, I get that stuff. But I use it as a corrective technique. There's not a wrong way or right way, there's a better way. If you look at Fetter and these guys, some guys are over the shoulder, some are below the shoulder, some are around the ribs, some are in the pocket. Okay, what I want you to do, this is a corrective technique. Tap the dog at 6.30. Every follow through, Peter, I want you to put in your right pocket. Okay? Don't move that racket. Okay, almost, that was around your hip. I mean, that was around your ribs. Okay, time out, you gotta get it back a little further. Go back to 6.30, the racket and go into the pocket. Don't move it. Okay? A little bit. Now what I want you to do, go ahead, set it. I know this is going to freak you out even when I say it. You're going to finish below your right knee. Only three people I've done this with had reconstructive ACL surgery. So don't worry. Okay, don't move the racket. Blow the knee. Again, notice how I kind of dodged that. I, I don't know you that well yet, so I don't trust you. Don't move the racket. Don't move the racket, set it, don't move it. Arm is straight, okay, he's at 630, okay, awesome, racket heads above the wrist, he's tapping the dog, pull it, roll it, go below the knee, go, go below the knee, go back a little bit of the racket, there you go, pull. Hello! I like that. Come on over here. The sound, it's not the 4th of July yet, it's only May 2nd. Okay, that was good, that was good. I like it. Now, when I first said go below your knee, did you think I was crazy? What do you I, think? I already know you're crazy, so I love it. <laughs> crazy I, in a good way. But yeah, I mean, I, I know that you're gonna do a lot of experimental yeah. stuff, so I'm just like here to soak up everything. And, okay. And, and so what did it feel like, uh, even though you did okay going into the pocket, what did that last one feel like? Because when the minute I say that, especially to an adult, they think it's gonna go into the bottom of the net. Yeah. And if they're tight, it might. Yeah. But remember, from a science point of view, whether you hit the baseball, the golf ball, or the tennis, once you hit the ball, the ball's gone. Yeah. So the follow through has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. It just deaccelerates the racket into a certain area. Yeah. It might help you think, well, it's gonna make it go there. The follow through doesn't make a ball go there. Mm -hmm. There's other principles. Yeah. Tend to be very strong and powerful, and I think a little tighter through your shot. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people talk about my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna relax and see if we can loop down and basically touch, touch the ground. Yep. yep. Okay, let's try that. All right, here we go. So now we're looking at bigger drop under the ball, up and hit. See, now you still, you see that? So you still hit a rocket right through the court, which is great. So I want you to also change your window, okay? So I'm gonna put a window up here for you. Right now I'd say, which uh, again, you guys, uh, he looks like he's hitting low over the net, but a lot of these are probably coming about that high over the net. So you got a good height over the net. We're gonna add another racket to it. Okay, so I, cause one of the things you said, you'd like to have a heavier ball, kind of like Subash of the tennis troll. And uh, there goes my whole basket. <laughs> right, my basket needs surgery, but we'll keep going. All right, you ready? Yeah, man. Here we go. It's set. That's better, do that again. There you go, good, ready, good, it's okay, I like what I'm seeing. Good, there you go, that was a heavier ball right there. Good job, a little higher over the net. Good, a little higher still. That's it, now more acceleration. That's okay, ready. Good, one more. Good, okay, excellent. 
So first of all, Justin, you're picking this up really, really quick. The ball had more spin on it, a lot more RPMs on it, which was great. Uh, it was going high over the net. It's not the same heavy ball that you hit though when you hit through the court. And uh, as you said, it felt awkward. And the biggest reason why it felt awkward is you're, tr you're really trying to go for it. We said this is the lab, you're, you are experimenting, which I like. Now the next phase of this, what you're doing here, and this is what a lot of people do when they try and add more spin, is you're taking all your energy and you're going from here to here really quick, okay? Your hip is basically carrying from here, and we had an, a, an arrow going through, it's like really short, it's going like this and over, all right? What I want you to do is I want you to get under it, I want a big hip push forward, see that? So like you're gonna still hit through three balls with your hip, and then go up, and then come over. What's happening right now is you're just transferring everything over too soon because I gave you the tip to come over. But I still want you to come under, out, look at that, all the way out, and then we start to like, oh my gosh, I just wanna relax after I did all that work. Okay? All right. Let's see if we can do that. So here we are again. I wanna see a lot of what I saw, but a little more hip forward. That's good, but still do, do open like you were doing before. That's your old forehand that we still love and we still wanna use. Let's see a little bit of the new school. That's it. Hit open stance. That's good. Now give it a bigger lift. See how you're moving there too soon? You're moving off to the ad side too soon. There you go. Higher hit. That's it. Okay, now, Justin, we're gonna play the trust game. You gotta hit over my head. <laughs> you're still hitting through everything. We gotta really get the idea of lifting. So right now, you've gotta hit over my head. Okay, and we've just met, so I will be upset if you hit me. All right, you ready? Here we go. That's right, good, again. There you go, now more racket head speed over my head. There you go, that's what we wanna see, more racket head speed over my head. Don't close the body up, keep the body open. See how you close that time? Keep the body open, ready. That's the idea, do you see that ball? That would be a nice shot to add into, our, into some of our matches. Then we can set up your crushing forehand. Justin, so how is that starting to feel? A little, a little better. I mean, very unnatural for me, who's always driving through the court and playing more linear, but I definitely saw a couple of those. They looked like they were going out and then land an inch or two from the baseline. I'm like, that would be a great thing to add. Yeah, it would be a great thing to add, especially because you can, at any moment, as we see, drive through the court real easy, okay? So I'm super excited to see what I'm seeing right now. Um, we're gonna make it even cleaner. What I'm seeing right now is because it's new, it is looking forced, okay? So it still looks too tight and I think you're hitting more of your balls closer to you. I don't think we're getting the sweet spot yet. So we've gotta create a little more space. As you're hitting your arms still a little too in tight here, I wanna see it really come out there like we're doing like a hook shot almost and then up and around kind of like Rafa does and then we'll get there. So we're gonna get the balls. I'm gonna replace my poor basket that just disintegrated on me and then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna bring out a tool, okay? And, we'll, <laughs> and this is gonna be a tool no one's gonna be expect, expecting. I think it's gonna help us a lot. All right, let's do it. Uh, okay, Justin, so just, just uh, actually, we just brought this out. He doesn't know what it's for yet, but he does see the Tospin Pro, and he's right away intrigued, and he's swinging on it. So, so go ahead, just, just show us what you, just play with it, and show me uh, what you're kind of doing at this point. Okay, so the ball didn't spin there. Didn't spin there. <laughs> Spun a little bit there. So we're, working. so we're seeing some of his issues. It's not spinning. Okay, great, I love this, okay. This is, okay, so this is awesome because this is a super advanced player, okay, very, very good player, but he does what all 
the guys do when the first time they see this. Congratulations though, at least you haven't knocked it down. <laughs> Most men when I give them this, they start whacking this thing and then this thing topples over and so the way you and I do suggest, especially for your game, you get you get one of these. Um, I'm gonna bring it this way, just so people can see what I'm doing here. Uh, but this is a Tossman Pro. I'll put the link in the in the description for everybody. But the idea is you want to be able to hit this thing and see that thing start moving. Once you get the momentum going, it goes faster and faster and faster. Okay. So it's very hard to do that right off the bat. I bet you our friend Subash from Troll Tennis could probably do this right off the bat with all his spin. Um, so what I suggest you start doing, and I would invest in one of these because you definitely could use more rotation on your forehand, is the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to start moving it with your hand, okay? Not even your racket. And, and then once you go up and down like this for a little bit, then I just want you to go forward and through and see if you can make that move a little bit. So that's, that's step one. So you can put your racket down and you could just start working on step one. And by the end of this, hopefully we're going to get that thing spinning like crazy. That's right. Even that feels weird. Yeah, it even feels weird because you used to hit more flat through the ball. There you go. And then when you go forward, good. Good. There you go. And, and then what I want you to do is, yeah, once you, once you start to feel it, right, let me show you. Once you start to feel it, make sure it's moving so it's fair for me. Yeah, it's moving pretty good. Okay. Then I want you to really lift up and be more relaxed and come all the way over here. So as a righty, you're going to come all the way over there. Okay. Almost. One thing, notice how, notice how right now he's right in the belly button area. Look where I am. I'm more behind it. So that's another thing that's kind of messing you up is you're, you're too close so it's harder to get the spin. The more you're behind it a little bit and get that and roll, you'll, you'll start to feel that spin. That's much better. That's, that's exactly where you want to be. Good. Do that again. Good. One more. Good. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to do is you just get your hand a little further away and lower because he wants to start to really feel what it's like to orient himself under the ball. He's used to coming straight at the ball and hitting great forehands. We don't want to take that forehand away. But to add the heavier spinner, he's going to come down here and he's going to come up and see if you can start making that roll. Now what, why I'm able to make this roll is when I'm hitting, I know the angle, of, I have that racket head awareness in my hand that my hand is slightly facing forward. Why Justin's ball might not be rotating as much as mine is he's probably coming more straight at the ball because he's used to hitting straight through a ball. So he's got to change his angle a little bit. You see that guys? And then the ball's going to roll more. So see if you can do that. Good. Get a little further back behind the ball. There you go. That's perfect. And so you can see. Good. I, now one thing. His hand, his hand is just like this. Okay. You got to flex it back a little bit. There you go. And keep it in that back. That's right. Keep it in that backwards. Yeah. And there you go. He's already got more spin. See that? That's what I've lost. That's what he's lost. See, we just made a big fix there by seeing that. Good. Excellent. So he's going to, he, he, that's one thing you can work on. I just want to show you guys close to the camera. His hand was actually coming at it like this. We angled it back. And that's a big thing that the pros do. They're not using a ton of wrist when they're hitting their forehand. They have it locked back here and they come up by the time they hit, they're putting all that spin and then turning over on it. And he's getting a lot better. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your racket. You graduated. He gets to pick up his racket. And now what he's going to do, and I know he wants to take a big swing at it. We're not going to let him do that. Now what you got to do is you come here. You move your hand up and down, and then you rotate and finish down here by the pocket. So you're going to go up and down, feel it, make sure we got that angle. The wrist is, for you guys to see this, the wrist is angled back here. See, I'm in that angle back here, up and over to there, okay? Let's see him try that. Stand a little further behind the ball. See, notice how he always wants to get too close to the ball. That's awesome. Go, but but don't go. See, he, yeah, right. He went like this. I want him literally go up to the sky, 
right? You know how the football pros, when they score a touchdown, they point up to the sky? I want you to do that with your shoulder and up, and then relax it down. So see how high you can go. Really lift that shoulder up. That's exactly right, but then let it relax down on the other side. Up, and then keep coming, to, there you go. Keep exaggerating that, make it smoother. And yes, right, and then make it one continuous flow. Good. Good. Dude, you're totally getting it. I love it, that's totally it. I love that. Good. Now what he's got to do, and, and if he just did what he's doing all day today, that'd be fine, but I want to kind of accelerate the learning process for him. So what he's doing right here, which is perfect, he's going, and then he's stopping it, and then he's like forcing it down, which is a great way to learn it. But we're gonna try and like fast forward him two weeks into the future here. And I wanna see if he can go like this, and then just let it relax. Let it be all one, all one. Okay, so go back and forth on it, and then once you go, just let it go. See if you can let it go and finish. <laughs> I know. Doing everything. Good. You still are slowing down there. Let it just go. Good. High and go. Good. Good. Okay. I'm going to give him one more tip to help him uh, work this out. Right now what I want you to do is I want him to take his, his, his racket and literally hold it in these three fingers. And what I want you to do, we're not even going to worry about the ball right now making it spin because that's a whole other goal. I just want you to take this and your trigger finger right here, the finger right here, you're basically just going to lift it up. You're going to feel the bone lift it up and then just let it fall where it's almost going to fall out of your hand. Good. It's not even there. Yeah, right. And, and start it right here at contact. Oh. And, and no, we're not worried about that. Yep. <laughs> and take your finger and flick it up and down. Good. You're still, you're still holding on to it too much. Like literally, like make some space. Like, and can you hold in two fingers, start the momentum, and then feel like the racket's going to run away from you. That's right. But you're, see, he's still catching it somewhere around there, guys. I need to let him just trust it. Watch this. There you go. Dude, that's good. But he knows he still stops up every, every time there. No stopping. Just let it go. Windshield wiper. There it is. There. Oh, dude. Yes. Yes. He's got it by George. He's got it. Okay. Now, without thinking too much, get your racket about this far away from the tennis ball, about this far away, and then we're going to and, and start low and see if you can do that same move and finish there. And don't worry if it spins or not. Do your best and forget the rest. But let's just see if we can get that continuous. Two fingers? Uh, yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. Just stay and relax. Good, dude. Higher up. Yes! That ball is spinning like crazy on this thing. Okay, and that time it didn't. Okay, but you guys see that? Now it's spinning a lot. Okay, so that's, that's great. That's what we want. So now what he can do, we're going to fast forward him again. To, see, I, a lot of you guys doing this at home, don't be afraid to do like one exercise for one week and then do the next exercise. But again, you guys want to keep seeing improvement here. So we're going to try and fast forward him into the, the future again, two weeks. And now what I want to see is can you prepare, can you drop, and can you come up and then relax down? Can you do that? He's swinging too hard. Feel like you're just going to graze it lightly. Even though you're accelerating, you're looking for a light graze. Too much through the ball. If you hit the ball too hard and too much, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, there you go, that's it. That's right, you're looking to graze it. It's like playing a game of chicken with it. So this, this is a, yes, no, that's, that's actually better. He, he goes, oh, but that's actually what he needs to do to really get that feeling. See, now he hit it through too much. He threw it too much. Yep. So a couple of things. See, it's, it's harder than it looks. All right, this is a really good player here. So again, he's turning this way too soon. He's turning this way too soon. And he's, he's holding on the racket too tight. And he's hitting through it too much. So he's got a triple whammy. He's got to learn how to be super loose here. Super loose. Come low. Barely graze the ball. You don't need to hit the ball that hard to make it spin a lot. Barely graze the ball and then let it relax and come on over. That's how we're going to learn how to get more spin on it. 
Ah. Yep. There you go, we got it in that one. That was very good. One more. Good. That's very good. So that's something that Justin, uh, I think I think we probably, probably convinced him to order a Tossman Pro. I can tell he really likes tennis. So he's probably gonna order that tonight. And that's something that as the weeks go on, he will get better and better at that. Trust me, he's a great athlete, so he's gonna pick this up no problem. In fact, maybe in a couple of weeks, We'll have you come back with the Tossman Pro after he wears one and then see how good he can get on it. Um, but what I want everybody to remember is when you're trying to learn something, think of it like a book, okay? And going chapter by chapter. And then when you get stuck, go back to the previous chapter. So what Justin was able to pass, okay? So we'll take a look where what he passed. He was able to, to come here and do that, that and he finally, got, he finally got the ball spinning, okay? Then we had him put the racket here and we just had in a couple fingers and he was able to get that. Then when we got the whole preparation going doing that, that's where he fell down. So he should go back to the previous step and see if he can stay really close to the ball and feel that. And then once he does this and he's got that thing spinning like a hundred times in a row, then he can go back to full prep again and, and give himself another test. Okay? But don't just keep, you know, stuck in failure, whacking at getting more and more frustrated. Go back to the previous step and go to a place to where you get the success, feel it, then you can go to the next chapter. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, I've got this broom here because I noticed that Justin, for this spin, was hitting too close to his body, okay? So it wasn't feeling natural for him. So notice lots of times I kept saying hit open, Justin would still step in because he's used to stepping in and crushing forehands. Okay, make no mistake about it, he's got a great forehand. But I want him to also learn how to hit open and a little more loopy. So he's got, think about what he can do here if he can get this. He can start to hit a high heavy ball and then back someone off and if they hit a little short, he can step in and then crush his flat forehand for a winner. We're not taking that shot away, it's a great shot. But what he was doing is he was getting close here with his footwork, lots of times he was stepping in, so it was hard for him, he was too close to the ball, it was hard for him to really feel that speed. In. Okay, I want him to get comfortable with the open stance. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where his reach is along this broom. What I want him to do is find a, a spot to where he sets up in an open stance and then when he's going to hit, he feels like he's got to really reach out here. I maybe need to move just a hair there and I think now I think I'm in a perfect spot. See now my arm is fully extended and I can brush up on that thing and over. If I come in here and I go to hit my arms at all bent, I'm too close. So I want Justin to play around with the broom, get his feet lined up to where when he goes to hit, he's got to really reach out, he's got to really test his body to hit it and then come up and through it. See if you can do that. And go slow with it. Yeah, swing a lot slower, just find, just find the contact. Good. Does that feel like a good reach for you? Good. Can you swing slower and softer? See, that's right. I want it. That's perfect. Can you keep swinging slow and soft? We want to have a softer touch on the ball. That's perfect. Softer touch on the ball. Good. Keep the slots too hard. Softer. Good. That's it. Soft oh. touch. Soft touch. Good. You can feel it on the strings. Yeah, he's, he's starting to say, I can feel on the strings. I felt that one. Now the ball's spinning a lot. Yes, that's right. Now he's getting that soft touch. Look how he's dropping and hitting. These would be heavy balls he's starting to hit. He's starting to figure it out, folks. This is exciting. Hopefully we can get a uh, close-up of this ball spinning. He's like darn Rafael Nadal with it right now. Amazing. One more. Okay, good. All right, any light bulb moments going off for you right now? It just felt, yeah, I started to feel it and just right a little bit lower and kind of probably dragging up my string. I don't know, it felt good. I'd like to see where it goes. Yeah, you hear that guy? So he's saying lower, okay? This is actually one of the a great tip I got from Time Value of Tennis. They say, hey, if you want to hit some more spin and even get a little drive on it, which we don't want to tell Justin that yet, <laughs> but actually aim lower below the equator. And that's what he's starting to do. He's so used to hitting right through the ball, which again is a great skill to have, but he's not used to hitting up on the ball as you can see. But now he's starting to feel it. So what we do, watch this. This is gonna be so fun in our lab today. So Justin, here's what we gotta do. 
We're going to take you in a two-step process. We're going to go, again, that light touch I think really helped you. So you feel that spacing and actually we'll, we'll, create, we'll set you up on the spacing with the broom so you can make sure that you got that. Now Justin, you see why I don't play tennis? See how awkward I went down my back? This is terrible back. <laughs> that's, not why, that's why I'm not playing all those trolls, guys. Got a really bad back. Okay, so we're here and then we're gonna get this. We're gonna go one, two, three. So you're gonna do that three times. Then I'm gonna have a ball, I'm gonna pitch you underhand and you're gonna come out and you're gonna try and go open stance, loop, down to here, just one shuffle back, out, big looper, one shuffle back, and always try and have a light touch on the ball. I think you're trying to hit the ball too hard. You're trying too hard to get the heavy. The heavy is actually going to come with a light brushing feel. Okay, let's see how he does. <laughs> so go ahead, you got your three hits. Good, one, lighter touch. Good, even lighter touch. There it was, now ready? Light touch on the ball. Good, light touch on the ball. Good, light touch on the ball. Good job, those are much better. You see, one thing that's interesting there is Justin was not trying to hit the ball hard there and his ball actually had a very nice shape to it, which is one of the things he said he had trouble getting it on his ball. All those had a great shape on it. And I always want you guys to start slow and relax before you go too fast and relax. We want to go from slow and relaxed to eventually fast and relaxed, okay? So once you start to get this and you get your confidence, you can go faster as long as you stay relaxed. Okay, go ahead, let's do it again. One, good. Two, that's perfect, great light touch. Three, good, ready, here we go. Set, good job, that's a nice ball, open stance. Good job, a little higher. Look at that, guys, look at that. Let's do it again, one more time. Uh-oh. That's okay. Good, ready, good, ready. That's okay, here we go. Good. Awesome hit. Awesome hit. One more time. Good. Soft touch. Good. Ready. Good. Here we go. Good. Now don't now one thing to happen from the last couple rounds is Justin is very comfortable getting himself either in semi-open or a closed stance. I want him to start, and, and he's gonna need this as time goes on for all of us, right? And we know the pros even need that time with their open stance, but it's gonna help him. The more he can get comfortable getting wider with his stance as he's playing these younger guys and they bring him off the court, we want this, this weapon. This, being able to step out here long and feeling comfortable with this is a big weapon. If you're always wanting to be in close here, once people bring you off the court, it gets tough. So I, I want you to really focus on that open stance skill. Okay, so try and be as wide in your base as you can with the open stance. Let's do it again. Wide base open stance. Good, perfect. Wide base open stance, good. One more. Good, ready. Wide open stance lift. Good, let's go higher with the ball, lift up. Good, that's right, nice soft touch on the ball. That's okay, let's do it again. Ready? One more time, good. 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 Good, that's perfect, ready. That's awesome, ready. Good, ready. That's great. We can clearly see his ball has a lot more end over end action. We're getting some shape. And the cool thing is, Justin, come on in here. The cool thing is, is once Justin starts to really uh, get this feeling, he's gonna find so many more layers to that. You know, when you learn how to get spin, you literally become like a snowflake and there's no two that are the same. I mean, you can, have a, you can hit a lot of the same balls, but the cool thing is, is he can decide, I wanna hit this ball 
15 feet over the net. I want to hit this ball 10 feet over the net. I want to hit this ball, I want to hit a short angle with it. I want a heavy spin, I want a hard spin, I want a soft spin. It's endless. You know, right now his game is pretty much like this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, which is great. We want that, right? Mike Tyson made a great living off of this being that dude, okay? But now what we're adding is we're adding layers to his forehand and once the thinking goes away and he, he has this mastered, he can, he can add them all up in one point. What did you think of today's lesson? Dude, I mean, it, it was feeling so much better. At the beginning, I would not have felt like I was going to get to the point where I was hitting those at the end. It just felt too awkward and unnatural. And it was starting to feel the release, feel the ball lower, seeing some arc. It's exciting. Yeah. Well, let's wish him luck in his next troll match. I can't wait to see it. And what I, and, and here's another parring tip for him is I want him to think of this as it's in product development, okay? I don't want him to try this in his next match, which is going to be super tempting. He's going to have to do a lot of work off the court. He's going to have to go in the lab. He's going to have to create the product until it's ready to sell out to market. Now to market is being on the Tennis Troll channel and using it in a match. That might be two, three, even six months away. I don't know. You can try it every once in a while, but you know, to think like, oh my God, I got this great lesson. This is what a lot of people do out there in YouTube land. I got this great lesson. Let me go use it in a match. You, you have not earned the right yet to use it in a match. It's going to take work, it's going to take testing, it's going to take some pressure, and then all of a sudden you can go out there and use it in a match, okay? So great job today, and hopefully we'll see him back in like a month or something like that, and we'll see if it's, if it's starting to stick. Sounds good. Thanks, Peter. <laughs>